Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That was some blessed worship this morning. Jesus be the center of it all. Awesome. So good to see you this morning. And I tell you what, why don't you go in your Bibles, on your phone, or if you have your Bible with you today, go to Hebrews chapter 11. That's going to be our text as we begin. And we've started a series. This is going to be our theme throughout the summer. How many are glad that it was almost 90 degrees the other day? Wasn't that awesome? In the 80s, and I'm just going to say summer's here. It's, it's, it's like here. So our theme is on faith and freedom. And, uh, and just to hear this, God's will is, is freedom, that we be free. Even Jesus, when he talked about his mission, when he was here, Twice he mentions freedom. He said how the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance, freedom to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty freedom for them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. I mean, twice he mentions freedom in his mission when he was here. So God's will for all is freedom. For everybody, it's freedom. And Jesus said, for whom the Son sets free will be free indeed. So here's my part. And, and didn't Pastor Chick, didn't she do awesome last week? Awesome. Glory to God. I, wa I want Matt to come stand in front of me today. Glory to God. Shield me. Amen. So my part here and, and throughout the series, I mean, through the summer, uh, uh, I'm starting with giving you a list of the top things you need to know about faith according to the Scriptures. It's top things, and it's foundational. I'm not taking anything for granted on what anybody knows. And we're starting, and we're building a strong foundation that will open the door to understanding just why believing God is the way of freedom. And the last time I spoke, I gave you four, four truths on this, and today I'm going to give you another, and we'll add to the list. But this brings us here to Hebrews chapter 11. If you look, I know it'll be on the screen. Uh, uh, and, but also just, just mark this and, and, and have this and, and meditate on this later too throughout the week. Verse 1 says, now faith, and this tells us what faith is. Now faith is confidence, being confident in what we hope for, and assurance, being sure about what we do not see. Notice that in particular, about what we do not see. For this is what the ancients were commended for, believing but not seeing. They believed anyways. For by faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. How many think that God's command is pretty powerful? If a whole universe came, bang, yeah, here it comes. So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. So the next two verses go down, talks about Abel and Enoch and their faith. And then Enoch in 4 and 5, by faith Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. And he could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. Well, how do you please God? Well, this is a very important verse. Here we are in verse 6, and this is it. For without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So this is where we started. And I gave you the four truths. And this was number one and two that we talked about the last time. One's journey of faith begins with believing God is and that He is good. And you're on a good path if you believe that. How many here you believe God is and He's good? All right? So, so you're, on, you're on a good path there. And then number three, we said how faith, our believing, is of the heart. Uh, Romans 10 and 10, for with the heart one believes. And then Proverbs 3 and 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And how there's a difference between the head and, and the heart, which, which led to number four. Which how, and this is good news. You can have faith in your heart with doubt in your head, and your faith will still work. Like the fellow who said to Jesus, Lord, I believe heart-wise. Help thou my unbelief here. And his faith still worked. Aren't you glad the heart is bigger than the head, right? So we can have these things that come against the head, but still you can stand your ground in faith and go forward. So here's where we are today. And here's another truth. And, and this is just major. Uh, that's why instead of giving you three or four, I'm just going to talk about this one point here on faith. And this here, it has to do with our hearing. Our hearing. And just how important our hearing is. And you see this in Romans 10 and 17. Faith 
comes by hearing. This is our point here. And this is Romans 10 and verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Would you all read that with me together? Let's just read that out loud. Let's do it together. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Notice what comes first. In order of our having faith, we heard the gospel first and we were open to hearing it and then the faith came. And what I have seen throughout the years, in my short years, how many think 57 is just a few years? Thank you very much. Come on. 57 is just a few years. I know God places a premium on our hearing. Like it, it, it's, it's a major responsibility of this life. I mean, it's like the top, top deal is whether or not we're hearing or whether or not we are open to hearing. And I know we know this as well. How many parents here have children? Or how many had children? How many know it, it, it's, it's kind of a big deal whether they're listening to you or not. I mean, it matters. Not just seeing, seeing is important, but there's just something about hearing. If something goes on, it's not just sound bouncing off the ears, it, it is, but there's something here that's going on. How many have ever heard this before? I'm only going to say this one more time. Has anybody ever heard that one before? I, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying this one more time. Now, a good parent would, would do that. It got quiet there. <laughs> you really would just say it one more time. Don't say it again. That's just some advice. Don't say it again. How many for this? I heard this one the other day. How many have heard the countdown parent? Anybody heard the countdown parent? I heard this. I was, where was I? I said, sometimes I, you have three seconds to put that away. <laughs> Anybody heard the countdown? One, two. This is so real. It's, it's the same with God and His dealing with us. Someone might say, well, God's not talking to me. Yeah, He is. He is. He is. He is. He is. Accountability. Uh, a, a fellow by the name of Dr. Wallace, his educational field is in this area of hearing, are listening. He said this, and I thought it was so good. Notice all that's connected with hearing. If you bring this point up, it's a, it's a quote. It should be there. He says how hearing is essential. Now notice all that's connected. For maintaining relationships and connections with friends and family. Hearing is essential for fully participating in team and community activities. Hearing and experiencing life events. Hearing makes it possible to engage, listen, laugh, and enjoy many of the things that help shape your quality of life. Notice how much goes into our hearing, and God knows this. He's the one who's been talking about this for a long time. How hearing affects the quality of our life. But I'll tell you somebody else who knows this. How many know the enemy of the soul knows about this hearing business? That's why there really is a fight in this area of hearing. Because it has so much to do with uh, our paying attention. So there's a really real fight here. And even in general, hearing is an interesting phenomenon. It really is. Like every time I get up here, I have to trust that you're hearing me and believe it. And I can't always go by faces. How many have ever spoken before publicly? How many have ever had the experience of people? How many have ever looked around and you had one person just looking at you like, that's their resting face, right? They don't mean it. Just their resting face is, I'm against you. Then there's some of you out here, you got a, a smiley resting face. I love you smiley resting face people. I think, wow, I'm doing good. Look, they're, they're smiling. They're smiling at me. I was in a store the other day, and I heard a song playing on the speakers above. I, I really didn't think about it. I kind of for a moment didn't think about it. But then later on the day, I mean a lot later on the day, without thinking about it, all of a sudden I found myself going, uh, uh, give me one reason to stay here. And I'll turn right back around. Give me one reason. <laughs> and I thought, why am I singing that? 
You know why? It got in me. It, It got in me. And I tell you, it is just a fact. There's no way around it. And there's been folk try to get around it. I've tried to get around it, but just a fact. What you hear will get in you. One way or another. That's why faith comes by hearing God's Word, because His Word is filled with His faith. So I want to give you three main areas today in connection with faith and hearing. And if you want to just write these down, it's salvation, healing, and direction. Three main areas that are in connection with what's happening in the world, this realm called hearing. And again, we, we, we know how, how important this is in our relationships, uh, in, 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 in our marriage, and, and how, how important hearing is, and just communication with one another. And I've done this, and you've probably done this. How many have ever done this before? You're looking at somebody, they're talking to you, and, 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 and it's going in here, but how many know inside you're, you're not listening? Anybody ever done that before? I'm sure we all have. And especially in relationships it can happen. <laughs> we can act like we're hearing, but we're not. And I guess men tend to do that. You know. I've heard before, I don't, honey, I don't think you heard what I said. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, what did I say? Uh, it's a good day. <laughs> Isn't it nice, Al? <laughs> or you just get bits and pieces of it. And today, man, the distractions that we have in our lives today. How many have ever talked to somebody, and you're talking, it's good, and all of a sudden they, they do that? Now we got, bam, and I've got one. We've got so much distractions in this realm of hearing. And listen, 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 listen. There is so much now pulling on your hearing because it wants to get something in you. We are living in a time that talks about in the last days how there will be deception and great deception. And, and, and now wherever you look, whether it's in media, even in just what's supposed to be fun, media, how many know a lot of people are putting out what they think is true? A lot of opinions is coming through so much. And, 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 and but I'm so glad. How many are glad God's Word is just staying steady? <laughs> Throughout the ages... And I think it's awesome what we have today, how we can, like somebody the other day came up to me and then they were, sh- they were showing me, reading me a scripture on their phone. I'm, I'm glad we've got the Bible on our phones and our tablets, and, and I'm, I'm for it, and the software that I have now. Man, I have no excuse in my studies, like, Lord, if I just had better tools. Oh, man, do I have the tools. To study and to hear, like I've, I've got my computer here, and I've got my tablet here, and then I've got the good old-fashioned with my right hand, I take notes. How many still take notes? Yeah. Write it down, and I, I just, I just got to write it down. I just write it down, so I'm doing computer and my tablet, Word of God, and I'm writing it down. We do, we can. So, so if God says it's impossible for us to have faith, and He's not made it so that we can, we could challenge his justice. But he is just and good, and he has made it available. We have the word of God, and we can come out of any situation with our ears. With our ears. And here, let, this is a side thought here. This is, it's connected, but I was talking to somebody, and, and they were concerned about somebody. Uh, and if you're concerned about loved ones or, or friends and you're concerned about this area of salvation in their lives, uh, uh, the issue is really over their hearing. And there's different ways. And uh, what, what, what can we do? How can we help? What can we do? The issue is some, with somebody in, in salvation, like we just said, it has to do with the hearing. And we can pray about this area of hearing. And there's two ways we can do it. Uh, Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2, how he could pray that God would grant to certain folk that were going in the wrong direction. 
He said that you can pray that God would grant them repentance. That would mean that they were granted repentance and there would be like, that they would be then open to hear, which leads to a knowledge of the truth. And I'll notice, this is 2 Timothy 2. And so they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the enemy. How many of them, that's what we're wanting for our loved ones and friends? That they would come to their senses and come away because there's something there. The enemy, he, he makes it so you, you're, you're not hearing. Um, the, the, the truth, or, or we can, get, we can get, go through this going in the wrong direction, we can get rebellious, and we can start refusing to hear. And, and we've all been here. How many have been there? Oh, man. How many have been there where you know you need to hear something, but you don't want to hear it? It's a little weak. Let me say it one more time. How many have ever been there where you know you need to hear something, but you don't want to hear it? We've all been there with one another, and we can get that way with God. That's what being lost is. It's not that God's not re- reaching out or the truth isn't there. There there's comes this refusing, and he's going to, listen, I'm going to deal with you here. That's why it starts with the repentance, this turning away. And then Jesus talked about praying that laborers would be sent into the field, and we can pray that the right people would come across the paths of our loved ones and friends that we're concerned about, that the right people would come across their path that they would listen to. And there is something about that, this, this cup of tea, that's why God, I believe God uses different personalities and uh, churches are different, pastors are, are different, and the personality, the word of God is the same. But there is something about the right person saying the right thing, because there's some people you won't listen to, but there's, there's other people that the Lord could help but the right labor come across your path. And, and I can, man, I can point out in my life, first of all, I'm thankful for the prayers of my mother and father, that I would come to my senses. And how many glad I came to my senses? I know they are. Hey. And, and it was really, it was in 1984, I can tell you what started to happen in my life, this, this coming to, and there was a window of opportunity. And it was the grace of God, and I know it was the grace of God. And I also knew that it was an opportunity. <laughs> that if I didn't take advantage of it, it, I could, it could get get worse. I would continue in the world. But there was an opportunity in hearing. And, it, and I can remember there was a fella, my uncle had sent me to basketball camp during, before that time. And I remember there was a fella there, came to find out he, he was a Christian. I thought, man, this guy's cool and, and basketball and everything. But I remember he just simply, he just said a few things. You know, he, he, I told him about, you know, being a preacher's kid and all that. But he could tell I was the, the rebellious kind of preacher's kid. Yay, amen. I don't know I'm amen in that. Uh, but anyway, he, he just, but, it, but I remember one day just so, wow, thank you, Lord. He, he said, I'm, I just want you to know I'm going to pray for you, man. Just want you to know I'm going to pray for you. I can tell you you're just struggling with things. I want to say, no, I'm not. You know what I mean? Because I can just tell that there's a struggle there going on, and, and he said, I just want you to know, though, God is for you. He's not against you. And he has the best intentions for your life. It was just that, just so simple. And I remember that word got in me, and it stayed with me. I mean, I didn't repent and come to the Lord that day or week, but that came with me. How many are glad we can do something for our loved ones in prayer, right? Uh, take that with you. Take those, those two thoughts with you. How? Pray for the, the, an opening, a coming to their senses, that, that there would be a hearing in their lives, and then the right people would come across their, their paths. So faith for salvation comes through hearing. There's uh, several, many examples of this in the Scriptures. In Acts 11, uh, the Apostle Peter was an, uh, uh, talking about uh, an event that happened with him with Cornelius. Cornelius, faith in hearing. Uh, he was a Gentile centurion working for the Romans and in, in, the, in their military. But he, it's, it's not like he was searching. He was still, he's praying. He's reaching out to God. He's reaching out for answers. And he even had an angel come up. But, even, but the angel didn't, didn't preach the gospel. The God, Jesus said, you, you preach the gospel to men. But he said this in Acts 11, if you'll bring this up, he said, and he, this was Peter recounting the story. He said, and he, Cornelius, told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house who said to him, send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, 
who will tell you words, now notice, and what's the context? Words which you're going to hear by which you and all your household will be saved. How many are glad if you've been saved, you can claim your whole household too? My children, you're saved, <laughs> you're going to be saved. Yeah, your whole household there. Why does this work? Faith comes by hearing. Here's the second area of the importance of our hear hearing. Faith for our health and healing comes by hearing. Notice, here's just an example. Two cities Jesus was in. The first, it doesn't tell us exactly the name of the city, but it was in Galilee. This is in Luke chapter 5. And it says how, yet news, Luke 5, 15, yet news about him, hearing, spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him. Notice what's going on first. Hear him because faith comes by hearing. And this crowd heard. They were open. They heard. And then the hearing came the faith, came the believing. And so there was the anointing was able to flow and the people were believing. And then there was the healing because that's how it flows, the, through the, the believing. He was not shut down. He was not shut off. He was not resisted. And so the ministry flowed and, and, and because they're here. But here, another town, which just happened to be Jesus' hometown, and hometowns can be good. How many have a hometown? How many of you are like a hometown? Boy, I know when I was in Boston, they call them townies. You ever heard that phrase before? A townie. I didn't know what a townie was, kind of. Then I ran into a townie in Boston. Do you know that Boston has a unique accent? I run into a townie. He's like, did you pack your car in the packing line? It's like, car. How many are glad we don't talk like that in Ohio? <laughs> car. We don't go, ah, ah, ah. But they, because I lived in Boston in the mid-90s, they thought I was a southern person. <laughs> they said, man, you got a wicked, that's how they would say it, you got a wicked accent. I was like, no, I don't. I talk plain. How many think Ohioans talk plain? Well, they didn't think so. They're like, we think you're a hick. <laughs> you believe that word, hick? What in the world? <laughs> I was born in Tennessee, so just maybe. How many know what I'm talking about, right? Accent. He goes to his hometown. Hometowns can be good. But how many have heard the phrase, you, you, you know, that if you, the familiarity can breed contempt? Yes. And we have to watch that. So he goes, Jesus goes to his hometown. But instead of the hometown crowd receiving him, they get, ups, they, they get offended at him. And they got offended at him because it's kind of a town out, out and about Nazareth, country town. But they got offended about him when he came back. Like, well, well who, who does he think he is now? You know, he thinks he's better than us. Listen to how he's talking. And instead of hearing and accepting what he, what, what he was saying in his own ha hometown, they get offended. And that's where Jesus said, you know, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his relatives and in, in his own household. So we got to watch taking for granted our church. Yay! And we got to watch taking for granted our families. we got to watch taking for granted our loved ones and not just get used to it. So if you're sitting by somebody you love, tell them I love you. All right, tell them. I'm not going to take you for granted. Tell them right now. Tell them I'm not going to take you for granted ever. I am not going to take you for granted. So what happens? Here's Mark 6, 5 and 6. And it says, and he could do no mighty work there. How, what? What? How did it get started? Except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. There was a few who heard. But then it says the answer, and he marveled because of their unbelief. 
which is another way of saying they, they refuse to hear because faith comes from hearing. So they ended up in, in unbelief. But how many like the good news that we can be like that first town and come and hear and be healed? Yes. Faith for healing comes by hearing. And then here's our, here's our last one this morning on the importance of our hearing. And then I'm going to give you two action steps to take this week. Um, faith for direction comes from hearing. Hearing God's word, hearing from the inside. Salvation, health, and direction are hearing. Not just sounds on the ear, but also this hearing on the inside. By the Holy Spirit. Getting direction in his word. Many times just reading our word, reading our chapter a day. I can just, I can hear direction. And in life, as in the Holy Spirit, man, he will lead us in every area of life as we hear, as we take the time to hear and many times, just, just to st stop, the, stop the other stuff that's trying to get our attention in here, just find a way to get a time away and just hear, from the, get away from the distraction and hear from the Lord. John chapter 10, Jesus said, my sheep hear, <laughs> my sheep hear my voice, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them and they follow me. How many? That's awesome. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man, anyone, pluck them out of my hand. How many are glad, man? We're in the hand. But how did it start? It, it starts with the hearing. And you can see why there's just a premium on hearing. And, and seeing is, is, is a big part of life, but there's just something about this hearing element. And this, I was thinking about it because we, 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 started, uh, we started with five animals in our lives, five pets, uh, over 15 years. We've had these five creatures in our house. Anybody else have creatures in your house? I know some people don't like creatures in their house. I know a, a chick doesn't like creatures in her house. And I pray for her. She needs, a, how many know she needs a dog or a cat, right? In her house. We're down to one. The, the others have gone to glory. Because your whole household shall be saved. I thought y'all get that. Your whole household shall be saved. We're down to bubbles. Bubbles. She loves it. <laughs> she gets all the attention. <laughs> We're down to her. Uh, she's, she's a wonderful dog. Uh, here's a picture of her. Um, this is from, it's from a little bit back. She's daddy's girl right there. Um, that's when, to a degree, she could see. She's lost her seeing. She's all the way, we've checked, and she's blind, completely blind now. She has just one eye, too. And the one eye is not so good, but she's a trooper. Um, um, and it's interesting how people respond. When we're out and about walking this dog with the one eye, the people will see her kind of see her, and they were not paying attention. They'll go, oh, that's such a beautiful, oh, that dog is just so neat. And then they'll come up close, and they go, oh. Like, hey, what are you saying? <laughs> Never seen a one-eyed dog before? But I tell you what's so cool. Kids, especially boys, they think it's awesome. <laughs> we'll be at a campground walking our one-eyed dog, and boys will be like, cool, it's got one eye. <laughs> Can I touch it? I want to poke the hole. Dog's got one eye. I'm like, that's right. Dog's got one eye. But this Bubs, she has now, her whole life is hearing. Hear what I'm saying? Her whole life has become hearing. Smelling is a big part too, you know dogs. But her whole life has become being directed by her hearing. And it made me think of walking by faith 
and not by sight. There is an element to this life. That's what we're supposed to be learning. I don't know all that's involved with it, but I believe it has even something to do with our destiny. Learning to walk by faith and not be moved by everything we're seeing in this life. Not be overcoming by seeing this or, or seeing this circumstance or seeing and hearing the news and seeing and not be moved. Like the children of Israel, men, they started getting moved by everything they, they were seeing. But we can walk by faith. We will continue to, he's wanting us to learn how to trust him and not just be moved by everything we see. And he can bring us out through it. I'm pretty sure it has to do with our destiny. I don't like to use Star Wars as an analogy, but I am. Use the horse. In the first one, the, the best one, remember? And he wasn't seeing, he had to, yeah. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Follow me as I direct you by my spirit and my word in your life. So I'll, uh, if I let bubbles outside, and in that picture, by the way, you notice there's a lake there, and we're on a bench. And uh, we're actually, the bench, there was a flood in that place where we were up north a little bit here. And uh, everything was flooded, and we didn't know it. And we started walking the trails, and um, all of a sudden there was bugs. Reggie was walking, the other two dogs, I was with bubbles, and all of a sudden there was bugs. Anybody ever run into bugs before? And they weren't bothering Reggie, but they were bothering me. They were, I was like getting attacked by these bugs. So finally I just said, Reggie, Bubbles and I, we're taking off. You're on your own. <laughs> Didn't I? I just left there. I'm good that way. <laughs> because she wasn't bothered. So, I mean, we're going through the mud. Bubbles, here we go. We're going. We're going. And then we finally get out of all that mess, and we come to this lake, and there was a bench right in the water. So we went right into the water, and I washed her with the water. We were so muddy, and I washed myself with the water. And then we just sat down together on the bench, and that's her just looking at me like, I love you. You're so nice. But uh, when we walk her, I, I'll usually have to be out front because she listens to me. She hears me, right? She listens to me. Uh, and she, she'll follow. On the, these trails, sometimes there's something else, but she'll just follow. She'll hear my, my stick. I carry my, my walking stick, and, and she hears me as we're going. There's times when, when she'll be away right here. I'll just start bubbles, and I'll snap. Bubbles. Bubbles. And I'll just do a snap. And she just, she got a little prancy kind of walk. And she'll just come, and she'll, she'll, she'll come around, and she'll make her way to it. Hearing. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Faith in this area. And it doesn't happen overnight. But there is a development here. And I, and I trust you'll just continue to stay with us on this series as we continue to plant the seed here. And we're going to take these two action steps this week. I'm going to give you two action steps this week. Here's the first one. All right? Two action steps. In John 10, or no, not John 10, uh, uh, Mark 4. All right? Here's the action step. I want you to pay attention to your hearing this week. Come on now. Everybody, everybody raise your right hand. Say after me. I will. This week, this week. Pay, attention pay attention to everything, everything. I'm hearing, I'm hearing. And, how and how much, much I am hearing. I want you to like step outside of yourself and watch yourself hearing this week. Because it's so, we just do it and we don't think about it. We just do it and we don't think about it. Step outside yourself and watch yourself. And if it's something that you're hearing, you shouldn't just stop it. And then practice being able to stay with somebody hearing without getting distracted and disconnected. Growing that, developing that. Even if every fiber of your flesh is saying, I want to look at my phone. <laughs> Don't do it. Stay with them. 
focus, practice your hearing, paying attention to what you're hearing and how you're hearing is good. And here's the second thing, and I want you to just go ahead and stand up with me, brother, you can play. I want you to make this right here. I want you, everybody stand up. I want you to make this the confession, your confession of faith. And I want you to stop this in your life. The Lord deals with me about this too. He'll say, stop that, stop that. This has to do with this. Watch saying, I don't know. Over and over and over, over things. Watch saying, I don't know. Now, there, I'm not saying, you know, there's things we don't know. And I'm just saying it's become, if it's a habit, watch this and when it comes especially to life and where we're headed in life and our direction in life. Well, I just don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know what the answer is here. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Stop confessing I don't know over your life. You can know. You can know. You can know. I'm encouraging some of you. I can just sense you like I want to so bad. You can know. You can hear the voice, the direction of your shepherd in your heart and life. Believe it goes a long way. He will direct your life. He will give you answers. You can know. Make this a confession. You're, uh, t- uh, this week, just make this a confession. You can just go to it at your home. This is Psalm 23. And I'm going to show you how to do it, how to confess it just out loud. I want you to take the time every day this week, once a week, once a day this week. Make Psalm 23 your confession like this. And if you can, bring that up, the first part of it. The Lord is my sh- I'll do it first, and then we'll do it together. The Lord is my shepherd. No, I'll just do it first. Let me do it first. So you didn't hear instruction. I'm pretty sure I was clear. All right. right. Let me me do it for you. I'm just kind of try try it like this. What did you do? From your heart. Because you stop this confession. Your words have power, man. They really do. The Lord is my shepherd, and I hear him. Therefore, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness, the right paths for my life, for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you, my shepherd, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Ha ha. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. So surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Glory to God. All right. Here we go. So two things, your pain, action steps. You're paying attention to your hearing this week. And two, this is your confession of faith. Let's do it together. The Lord is my shepherd and I hear him. Therefore, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk, through the valley of the shadow of death. Come on now. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to God. 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 Glory to God.